as usual, it's Tuesday, so it is our time of the week to talk about relationships. And David has joined me. David Kavner, our expert, is in the house as I speak. But we got a very interesting email and we thought we would put it to David and ask him his opinion. It says, hi, Kira, I was wondering if you and David could give me your thoughts on my current situation. I'm in my late 30s and recently enough got into a relationship. It's going really well, but we both agreed his idea to go into the relationship with a clean slate. No discussion about past relationships, names or details, why they didn't work or how many people we've been intimate with. We both have baggage at this point in our lives. Um, and he said, but why would we get involved in talking about it? I liked the idea at the time, but now I'm worried it's the wrong plan. I wonder, should I be concerned? Is he hiding something? Would it uh, help him to know that I'd been cheated on before? And maybe that sometimes makes me feel insecure or anxious, but I can't talk about it or discuss it. I don't know if we should change the pack it took me a long time to change to find this relationship I don't really want to ruin it but I have no reason to doubt him either but I think I wouldn't mind my enhancing my understanding of him and him of me thank you for that and I will withhold that name um, David what do you think of that idea that somebody is now in a relationship and maybe they are 38 and maybe their boyfriend's 41 and they will have baggage and all that kind of stuff is it a good idea to keep exes to yourself or old hurts or partners or whatever and go in with a clean slate and open mind or, or is this a bad plan? Uh, it's a good question. I think the idea of a clean slate in, it's, I suppose in theory sounds perfectly fine. It's, it's very reasonable. Uh, in practice, is it going to work or is somebody going to feel like their new partner is missing a whole chunk of their uh, their life experience and their their the things they've gone through and the, the the hurts the fears the vulnerabilities the insecurities the inadequacies the fun the joy the good things that that they've shared with other people I mean should should you have to wipe all that out just because somebody doesn't uh, somebody you're in a new relationship with doesn't want to hear that I'm not so sure it's always a good idea and not so sure it's a good idea for everybody it might be for the two uh, people involved in this particular situation but already it sounds like the the, the woman writing to us is having difficulty with the concept of it she, she it seems like she wants to express something of her past so that this new chap understands that like being cheated on for example is a huge thing for her and I think that's very fair and reasonable yeah I, I, I do actually oddly I know somebody who's in uh, not quite this position but somebody who has a similar thing and they're actually married and before they were married they had a significant relationship mm-hmm. and uh they decided not to discuss their previous significant relationships and she said she finds it quite weird that her husband doesn't know about all this stuff that happened to her because they never discussed it but because it's years ago now she kind of feels that it's a bit late to bring it up you can see where the the idea comes from as people get older they do have baggage they maybe they've been married well maybe they've been married more than once they've been you know, but or maybe they've got kids or they've had bad relationships or good relationships in the past you can see the idea but uh, is is there ever a a, a good uh, is, is it ever a good idea to sort of start fresh? I, I I don't know. Well, I think taking on board for yourself the lessons that you might need to have learned from the previous relationships is a very important piece in this, so that you recognise. Okay, first of all, what what was I looking for in previous relationships that I didn't get? Uh, what was wrong with this with, with the person that I chose to have that relationship with? What what didn't work out in terms of compatibility? And and moving from that space into a reflective piece of well, what do I need to do differently in this new relationship to be to make it more successful? I think is really important as well. So it's not necessarily that you're telling your new partner all about the, the drama of your ex's relationships and whatever you know everything else that happened to you that's bad and good, but that you're, you're you're remembering yourself what you need to do differently, and then maybe throwing into the conversations with your new partner the fact that you know. I remember when I was with such and such a person we used to do this and it wasn't that great so I'm going to try and avoid that in this case with you maybe just give some background information but I'm going into too much detail I do think sometimes letting sleeping dogs lie is a good thing and that we all have skeletons in our closet there's all these stupid cliches but um, it's it's about not not I suppose toxifying the new relationship with old situations and previous difficulties from the past that don't need to be in the new relationship. That's very important. Because isn't that the fear why why somebody might choose to do this is because that maybe hearing about somebody that you maybe are, are mad about or whatever that they've been with this person or that person it can start to make people feel insecure and threatened and anxious absolutely and all of those things and maybe that's the ch- that's why you'd say no let's not do it because I don't want to feel those things I don't want to feel uneasy or threatened by your past and so let's just forget about it is there a line people have to walk where I mean it would be very uncomfortable for somebody if they were going out with somebody and they were kind of going on and on and on and on about their oh, ex absolutely. One, saying they were awful 
or they were wonderful. Either either is bad because why are you still We're going d- on about yeah, it? Why are you still talking about it? Exactly. And I, I, I also think, you know, telling somebody that's new the amount of lovers you've had in the past, for example, those kind of numbers, people don't necessarily need to hear them. So just be a bit of discretion is really important. That, that stuff as well. Uh, Dermot says, please don't call people's previous relationships baggage. There are real people involved. Of course, there are, Dermot, but you know, you know what I mean. I mean, people carry stuff with it. That's why it's called baggage. And even though there are real people involved for the person who's carrying it, in their head it is kind of psychological baggage they're not carrying real people they're carrying they're carrying the emotional fallout from those people but can I just say yeah, we, we also when I say baggage if I refer to baggage I mean the projections from previous mistakes or experiences that we've had that we now put into the new relationship that don't need to be there and we're all guilty of that to a certain extent perhaps so I think it's important for people to just reflect on well what am I what am I saying or thinking in this relationship that's based on previous experiences that actually has no foundation in reality? That's really important that you're not just uh, making the same mistakes again by imagining that this new person is exactly the same as the old person. A lot of, pe- a lot of people are, are suggesting that nobody should be in a relationship where they live by somebody else's rules and, and he may not want to share his past. Maybe that's his choice. But if she wants to share hers, she should. If you were going into a relationship and it was newish and you were hoping to make a go of it, obviously, you know, we've established you don't want to mm-hmm. bang on endlessly about exes that you loved very much or that you're very angry with or whatever. But is there a certain amount of stuff that would be reasonable to share in a in a blandish, perhaps not overly uh, emotional way with people? There is. And I also think it might be very, very easy and very simple to just ask the new person you're in a relationship with. What's your thoughts on talking about exes? And how much do you like? And is it okay for me to mention that I went to Paris and had a great time in Paris with such and such a person? And I'd love to go back to Paris, but with you this time. Is that stuff okay? Because everybody might have a different tolerance for what they can and can't cope with in that regard. I was listening to you saying, I was, yeah, of course you should talk about your ex. Yeah, of course you should say you were in Paris. And I'd balk at, I had a great time. I think I think framing the great time, I think, I think you have to be careful. You really do. What do you mean by a great time? Well, Paris was lovely. Oh, I thought you meant it with him. Not necessarily. So yeah, you do have to be very careful. And it's loaded and it depends on people's insecurities. It depends on, on their state of emotional well-being at the time you're talking to them. Somebody could be having a terrible day and the last thing they want to hear at that point is about your ex. But previously, they were fine with it because it's a great day. Uh, somebody else says, if people never talk about their past difficulties, they'll never get over them. Why do you suppose Ireland has so many issues with mental health? Irish men are the worst. I do remember I was saying about mm-hmm. th- uh, that I knew somebody in that situation where their, their husband didn't know about a past relationship really at all. That relationship had been very significant to that person at the time sure. and it ended badly. I do think that, that she felt that she had this whole part of her life she wasn't able to share and it wasn't necessarily a good thing because it was sort of uh, why doesn't he know about these big issues in my life and also maybe it would help him understand why I'm very anti this this and this absolutely and I think that's that's very fair and it's it should be expected from an intimate relationship and again what do we define by intimacy but intimacy is allowing yourself to be vulnerable with somebody so if you're holding uh, an entire segment of your life uh, information and experiences and you're keeping that hidden from somebody else that you're supposedly in an intimate relationship with is it really all that intimate if they can if you can never tell the person what's really gone on so I think there's, there's a again it's a fine line but it's also something that people individually have to choose and the might they might not feel that comfortable in the early stages of a new relationship discussing stuff in the past either and that's that's understandable too but as they too. go on they might yeah. feel differently and I think so Yeah, someone says a clean slate is not conducive to real intimacy and often suits people who've made serious mistakes in their past and have done nothing ah. to deal with them I have countless friends that learned from others halfway through a serious relationship about past cheating and or abuse and or alcoholism or gambling. That kind of silence or cover up should never be silenced. And if a person doesn't want to talk about it, it is a sign they have not dealt with such issues. I suppose as well, if you have big issues in your own past you want to talk about, you could feel very uh, silenced or whatever as well if you have stuff you want to share. But anyway, look, thank you very much as ever. That is David Kavanagh, our relationship coach. 